is proud to present the 1989 Light, Power, and Pride Awards. Light, Power, and Pride represents outstanding performance by City Light employees in three distinct categories. The High Voltage Performance Awards, the Safety Awards, and the J.D. Ross Achievement Awards. The Safety Awards program has been an unqualified success for City Light since its inception in 1986. Aside from providing incentives and fostering an increased awareness of safety on the job, the program resulted in documented savings to the utility of $183,760 in 1988 after program operating costs were deducted. Originally established for field personnel in the Transmission and Distribution and Operation Divisions, the program has been expanded in subsequent years to include employees in the Materials Management Division, the Construction Engineering Unit, the Appliance Service Unit, and the Building Operation Unit. Each participating division or unit sets thresholds of accident level reductions for safety award eligibility. Divisions or units which exceed these standards can then conduct a lottery from which are drawn the individual winner who receives a day or more of paid personal leave. This award is proved that by working safely, everybody wins. High Voltage Performance Award winners are nominated by their peers and selected by a committee of City Light employees. The selection is based on exceptional performance, outstanding achievement, and exemplary personal characteristics. The following are this year's winners. Don Carter is known for his high quality work in operations division as a structural iron worker. Don has applied creative solutions to problems during 23 years of service with the department. When a footbridge at the Skagit needed replacement, Don designed a gondola which could slide along underneath the bridge. Don's design gave workers convenient, safe access to the bridge and resulted in a savings of both time and money. Leslie Cordner has built a reputation of taking on the hot jobs in mechanical engineering, those with the tightest deadlines. Recently, she completed a project involving the ventilation system for underground levels of the City Light Building. Originally assigned the job of solving the A-level ventilation problems, Leslie didn't stop there. Her research found that B and C levels were experiencing similar problems. Her work resulted in an improved system for A, B, and C levels, and a safer work environment for both occupants and maintenance personnel. Larry Hendrickson is a consistent high-voltage performer. Working for Customer Services Consumer Advisory Unit, Larry is the single point of contact for downtown's large commercial and industrial customers. Larry handles technical questions and explains requirements to architects, engineers, developers, and contractors in the downtown area. During the 50-block outage, he coordinated several department divisions in canvassing portable generator information and outlining the needs of service consultants and engineers. Larry truly excels in protecting City Light's interests and by providing exemplary customer service. Jim Odegaard has been one of City Light's most outstanding employees for 37 years. Jim's long service as a skilled line worker is reason enough for a high voltage performance award. But Jim may be better known for his work with the Hard Hat Heroes program. This program reaches over 4,200 students each year. Jim helps youngsters understand basic electrical safety concepts and explains the role line workers play in bringing electricity to their homes. According to Community Relations, since 1986, Hard Hat Heroes and Jim Odegaard in particular has received more favorable mail than any other program at City Light. Joshua Rosario has made considerable contributions to Energy Management Division as an Energy Management Analyst. Joshua prepares Energy Management reports for commercial customers. These extensive, highly technical documents are used to help plan and manage energy use in commercial buildings. Joshua's top quality work goes beyond serving customers. He has always enjoyed sharing his knowledge and skills with other staff members. Joshua's work with both customers and co-workers clearly makes him a high voltage performer. Ann Young has lived at the Skagit Project for over 40 years. 
She is a shining example of what it means to be a high voltage performer. As an administrative support assistant, she frequently goes above and beyond what is expected of her job classification. Anne handles the reservations for overnight stays at the project, arranges for meals, and manages the mail. She frequently answers questions from visitors to the project and is known as the resident historian and public relations person. Anne always makes a trip to the Skagit a pleasant experience. Tom MacArthur has earned tremendous respect in the department over his 24 years of service. His technical knowledge of the budget process is held in high regard by both City Light and those who oppose him during the budget process. Tom spends many unpaid hours resolving budget problems and meeting critical deadlines. And his co-workers all agree that he's a caring, professional manager. It's difficult to find people with the knowledge and integrity possessed by Tom. We're proud to have him on our team. Niall Morrow always provides the extra effort needed to keep City Light customers happy. As a customer service representative, he handles a constant stream of calls, including new service requests, appliance service, billing problems, and complaints. Through it all, Niall maintains a cheerful attitude with both customers and co-workers. His exceptional ability to consistently promote cooperation and teamwork and his professional representation of the utility epitomizes the best of the best at City Light. Wendy Zeldner is responsible for installing and maintaining underground services in her job as network cable splicer. She has always set very high standards for her work as well as her crews. Wendy has successfully led crews consisting of all new employees and most of her jobs come in under budget. As the only woman to reach journey level as a cable splicer in the local IBEW, she is a positive role model for others. Teamwork. There's a lot of talk about it these days, but this team believes in putting it to work. Bob Laney, Randy Short, and Tay Van Yoy are the group that carries out the moves within the department. They consistently go beyond the expected and make what is often a difficult situation into a pleasant experience. They're efficient and organized, but perhaps most important, they care about the needs of the building's tenants, and it really shows. We all owe a great deal to these top performers. And that's this year's High Voltage Performance Award winners. The final category of light, power, and pride are the J.D. Ross Achievement Awards. The program recognizes and rewards those whose work has saved the utility a minimum of $2,500 during the award year. Employees are nominated for these awards by management and selected by committee after extensive review and cost-benefit analysis. This year, there are four individual winners and one team winner. Joan Mayer is a winner in the program achievement category of the J.D. Ross Awards. Joan thought that too much material was being placed in the garbage dumpster and that with a little effort in sorting this material, the department's garbage bill could be reduced. By giving away scrap wood and pellets, which were unusable, selling usable scrap wood, and recycling cardboard, she reduced the average number of dumpster pickups from 11 to 4 per month. This saved the utility $9,659 between January and August of 1989. In addition, while Joan was reviewing the garbage bills to determine if her idea was working, she discovered that City Light was being overcharged. This resulted in a rebate of $2,380. Clearly, Joan deserves this distinguished award. Sirawan Lemongold is a winner in the Sustained Achievement category. She prepares daily, weekly, monthly, and other system operation reports and manages the system operations data. But Sirawan doesn't stop with her daily duties. She's had a prominent role in developing and refining the computerized database used in managing the more than 150 contracts dealing with purchases, sales, and transmission of power. In addition, she has assisted a consultant hired to computerize most of the utility's energy load and resources database. Her painstaking hours of reviewing the consultant's preliminary products and educating their staff on City Light's report structure has really paid off. 
Sarah Wan has saved City Light an estimated $12,000 during the award year. Dick Koch is manager of general accounting, and Fernando Estadillo is a principal accountant in general accounting. They're winners in the project achievement category. Together, they prepare to petition for refund on taxes paid to the State of Washington Department of Revenue for the period between January 1984 and August 1988. The petition was based on their own research, review, and analysis of Washington law. The successful petition resulted in multiple savings. Tax expense was reduced by over $7 million. Interest income was increased by almost $454,000. Another $800,000 was saved when Fernando and Dick decided to gamble that their petition would be successful and started paying the lower tax amount immediately after they submitted the petition. The final total savings is a whopping $8.5 million. Wayne Puckett is a structural iron worker and a winner in the project achievement category. Wayne expended extraordinary effort and time working with engineers, factory personnel, and specialists in the metallurgy field, and developed welding processes for cavitation repair on the newest stainless steel turbine runners at Boundary Powerhouse. Wayne experimented with different types of welding rod to determine durability. The process developed by Wayne and subsequently approved by engineering simplified the repair procedure and minimized grinding. Wayne's intense interest and effort eliminated the necessity of hiring a consultant to solve the repair problems. A savings of $10,000 was realized. Mark Tireman became acting CIS project director in June of 1989. At that time, CIS was still unstable, eight months after it had been converted from Univac to IBM hardware. In just three months, Mark provided the leadership and management expertise necessary to stabilize the CIS system and move it forward into a production mode. He improved communication and relationships with the Department of Administrative Services, City Light staff, and consultants. Mark's management of the project afforded approximately $250,000 in quantifiable savings through the renegotiation of contracts and the elimination of some consultant fees. Thanks to his work, CIS is now responding to its users' needs, and customers are receiving better service. And those are the winners of this year's J.D. Ross Awards. <laughs>